Hello and welcome to this brief uh, video tutorial on how to use the Loop Cell Browser from 10x Genomics. Uh, this piece of software is um, a really nice way to get a quick visualization onto your single cell RNA-seq data and I just wanted to make a quick video about it um, because I think it is a really nice software, it's easy to use and uh, I hadn't seen anything on YouTube about uh, how to exploit the features of this particular piece of software so let's get started. Um, so now I've, I've downloaded and installed the Loop Cell Browser from um, 10x Genomics website. Uh, I'm assuming here that you already run your single cell RNA-seq data through their Cell Ranger pipeline, and that pipeline has produced a file called a C Loop file. You will need that uh, C Loop file for import here, and if you've imported it in the past, it'll show up in this recent files list. So let's just start by clicking on the tutorial and it will load our data for visualization. Now there are several things going on here. First thing to notice is that in the center we have a two-dimensional um, dimensionality reduction plot. This particular plot is a TSNE plot. And what this does is it shows all of the cells in your sample um, where each dot corresponds to a cell in the vast majority of cases uh, where there's one barcode per cell. And it, it's reducing the higher dimensionality of the gene expression data onto two dimensions here so we can look for patterns in clusters. Um, and then the clusters that it's found, it reports here on, on the right. So you can see that there's a color code and that code corresponds to the various 16 clusters in this data. You can turn individual clusters uh, on and off by selecting this check mark next to each cluster. It also tells you how many um, cells are in each cluster and that uh, percentage of the total, which is pretty nice. Now below this central projection uh, you have uh, by default is a heat map showing uh, graph-based log2 changes for each cluster. So each square here is a gene. Um, if you want to get a list of genes that define the clusters, you can do that by switching from the heat map view here to the gene table view. And then as you select each cluster, it will show you a list of the most significant genes that are upregulated that define that cluster. And you can scroll through that. So this is telling us, for example, that cluster 1 is uh, defined by the LCK gene, which is highly significantly enriched, CD2, LTB, etc. And you can explore this for every cluster that it has detected and you'll notice that the genes on the left here are changing uh, as you select each cluster because each cluster will be based on different um, most significant genes so CCL5 here etc. In this case cluster 7 only has a couple of genes that rise to significance. Now on the right you can select some options about this gene table you can display uh, the log two-fold change or the average expression. You can look at up, down, or all significantly different genes per cluster. Uh, up is selected by default. You can also export a CSV table from this. Uh, going back to the plot, you'll notice that you can hover over individual uh, cells. And you can also zoom in and click and drag. On the left here you have a toolbar that uh, gives you some options for selection, zoom in and out, uh, auto scaling, and then you can also um, swipe up and down on your mouse or on your trackpad to zoom in and out as well. If you want to select a group of cells you can do that by selecting the lasso for example. Now you can assign them to a new category of your own choosing, which is a nice, uh, a nice feature. If you want to save the changes that you've made, you can do that here. 
So if you define a new cluster, for example, and you, you want that uh, to be saved, you, if, you, if you save it, next time you open up the C loop file, that change will be saved. You can also export the TSNE image to uh, a JPEG file for inclusion in a grant or a paper. Now, on the top right, in addition to looking as a cluster-based view, uh, you can also have a gene expression view. And this becomes handy when you're trying to identify where certain genes are most expressed. So, for example, if we search LCK, we know from the graph-based uh, table that that's highly upregulated in cluster one. So we can put that into the search box and zoom out a little bit. And you can see that cluster one and LCK expression are correlated. Uh, going back to the categories view, you can also do the split view here, which takes each cluster and puts it in its own box. So this is another way uh, to look at the data. You can scroll around with this and zoom in and zoom out as well. And then you can also, I believe, cluster and uh, show gene expression on the basis of individual clusters, which is nice. So that's it for my brief tutorial. There are other things you can do, like importing uh, VDJ clonotypes. Maybe I'll, I'll go into that in another uh, short video. But I just wanted to show very briefly some of the things that you can do with this nice piece of software uh, for getting an initial quick look at your data. Um, I found this software to be very easy to use and a great way to quickly answer and address research questions. So I'd highly recommend it.